Hi, here I am today in the uh, little village of West Hackbourne in Oxfordshire. And uh, believe it or not, this little uh, reasonably quiet village in Oxfordshire, um, although it's called West Hackbourne, it didn't always used to be called West Hackbourne. It used to be just Hackbourne. And um, this is the story that I've learned about this beautiful little village in the middle of Oxfordshire. Now, about a mile and a quarter over in that direction behind uh, the camera is the village of East Hagborn and that's where we're going next. West Hagborn has a lovely little road running through it past a pond in the middle. In the summer, on St George's Day, the locals put a dragon in the pond that looks like a Loch Ness Monster. There's a farm situated right in the centre of West Hagbourne, and there are several businesses that run out of it. West Hagbourne is about a mile south of Didcot. It's a lovely little village and has a great sense of community in the village during the summer months when there are arts and craft fairs going on. Coming out of West Tagbourne, you come up the road a little bit and you get to Coscott Corner. There's a beautiful farmhouse, an old manor house, Coscott Manor, which is situated there. And there used to be a cross on that corner a uh, stone cross and the remnants can still be seen sitting on the grass verge. Now the manor is a beautiful Tudor manor but there's a new build opposite and that bungalow is called the Old Cross and these crosses have quite a story that you'll find out later in the vlog. So this is the village of East Hagbourne. It used to be way back in the 5th and 6th century called Hackerburn after um, a Saxon chief that um, came uh, after the Romans had left England, came over in their longboats and uh, settled in this area and uh, the brook is still named that runs through the village of East Hagborn, the Hacker Brook. And um, Hacker Burn basically means Hacker, the name of the chief, and Burn is a name for a brook. So this is Hacker Brook, if you go back to the 5th and 6th century. And some of these buildings are still here from that time. It's a busy little village now, it's growing. It's got uh, some new builds going up on the outskirts of it, but uh, what a great place. And uh, here's for our little history trip, and I hope you enjoy it. Now various abbots of Sirencester stayed in the village manor house, and this is mentioned in the Doomsday Book. It was one of their country retreats. And one of the Ecclesiastes was responsible for erecting gallows in the village from which they hung felons. It's probably due to this that the three sanctuary crosses were built, giving protection to criminals, taking refuge within their confines. In these circumstances, the criminals within 40 days could appear in sackcloth before the judge, confess his guilt and take an oath to quit the country. At one end of the village, near the St Andrew's Church, is a five-stepped upper cross. The cross used to be at the top of a ten-foot shaft, but it was probably destroyed in Cromwell's days. But two centuries later, a square capital was attached to the old shaft on three sides are sundials. On the fourth is an almost illegible inscription. At the other end of the village stands the remains of the lower cross, next to the old war, war memorial, and the stump of the cross can be seen at Coscott, as I have aforementioned, near Coscott Manor. So these three 
crosses completed a triangle of refuge within the village. The church still retains the 14th century solid iron sanctuary knocker on its north door. A fugitive could touch it and utter packs to seek sanctuary in the church. East Hagborn Church has a distinction and it shares only one other English church of having a sanctus bell cot which is at the east side of the tower. In 1545, Mrs. Alice Oldworth of West Hagborn, who died of the plague, left 16 pence of old pence, this equates to about 7 pence, in today's money, to pay for a sanctus bell, which is still rung twice daily. So this is St Andrew's Church, and you'll notice on the sign it says Hagborn not East Hagborn, although the church is situated on the outskirts between West Hagborn and East Hagborn. That's because many years ago the whole place was one, but back in the 1600s the, there was a great fire and the buildings between the church and what is now West Hagborn burnt down. They were completely lost and it was turned back to farmland and then there was a train line put in between the two. So this is St Andrew's Church and you'll notice that the stonework and parts of it have got different looks and different ages to them. This is because different bits were added on. And believe it or not, there's eight bells in the belfry up there that uh, were all commissioned by different people over the time. Can you imagine coming to the church in sackcloth if you were a felon and trying to find the north door and knocking on it and asking for sanctuary. Well, there's been a church on the site since the 10th century, but in the 11th century it was recorded as being in the care of Renold, a Norman priest who was Chancellor to Edward the Confessor. Renold died in 1133, and the church then consisted of a nave and a chancel. But in 1190, the south aisles were built and parts of the arcade and the earliest material still remains. That's why you can see so many different types of brickwork. In 1303 and during the 14th century, the north door and its ancient hinges and sanctuary knocker were built. Stained glasses in some of the windows still on the north aisle windows. And in the 15th century, saw major additions to the present tower with its Sanctus Bell, which is one of only two in England, as I previously mentioned. The present medieval pulpit is also installed at that time. The church has a peal of eight bell, bells which were hung in the tower between 1602 and 1781. One was recast in 1910, but the peel is today otherwise the original and is considered by many to be one of the best in the country. Now in 1659 there was a great fire just the other side of the church. It effectively divided the village into two. It destroyed cottages and farmland and lots of different parts of the village burnt down. I just love the way they've uh, got the herringbone uh, brick pattern here and the way they've cut the tiles uh, up to the apex of the roofs on these buildings and the chimneys that uh, stick out at the side of the building. These little uh, houses are so old, 
but so beautifully kept and uh, give a real sense of um, historic beauty to this village. And you can see beyond the new cross there, the building is uh, sort of a Saxony uh, type of style with the thatched roof and um, then some Tudor buildings uh, further on from there. And we're going to go and have a look further through the village and talk about more of the history. The village of East Hagbourne had a disproportionate number of taverns or public houses, six in all. And for a such a tiny village that was quite a lot. But according to records, five of the pubs were run by the Napa family at one time or another. Unfortunately, all apart from one has closed down, the Fleur de Lis, which is still open and serves really good food at this moment in time. 